and welcome back to Chemistry Basics Part 4, the concluding part of this short series. If you've followed the series then you'll know that I've covered the basic structure and fabrication of small wall-hung cabinets using many of the common methods of construction. And in this video I want to talk about whether you should fit a back to the cabinet like this and how you might go about hanging it on the wall. Now I said at the start of this series that a cabinet is just a basic box of just four components, maybe five if you're adding a back. And it's the back that I'm going to talk about today. So should you fit a back to a cabinet or carcass? Well, in my experience, yes, absolutely, unless there's a solid reason not to. I think in 20 years of doing this for a living, I've only ever fitted one set of shelves that didn't have a back fitted. And in that instance, the reason was a feature wall that the clients wanted to show through the carcass. That one happened to be a mural in a kid's bedroom. But if the feature is just a flat colour, I'd still fit a back, but paint it that particular colour. With a mural or wall covering, then no back is definitely the way to go. In which case, your hardware choices are pretty limited, assuming that you don't want to see the actual fixings that hold the cabinet to the wall. Now, probably the most common one is a simple hanging plate like this. This is a small metal plate that's routed into the back edge of the carcass sides that hangs off screws that stick out from the wall. These can be a little bit of a fiddle to fit, and as always, it's much easier for me to show you one rather than try and explain it to you. The plate needs to sit in a 14 by 46 mil recess that I'm cutting about 4 mil deep into the back edge of the cabinet on a router bench, and I'm using a bit of trial and error to set the fence just right. There's no adjustment on this plate, so I've set up stops on the fence to mark the in and out points to keep both sides consistent. And with the recesses cut, the plates are just screwed in place, making sure they face the right way. So hanging a cabinet on a wall isn't exactly difficult or complicated, and you typically know what sort of height you want the top of the cabinet to come to, sometimes called a datum, and you can work down from that where you need to add the screws. There's very little wiggle room with these hanging plates though, so I actually like to mark the centres of the screws on a level like this, and then it's easy to transfer those marks onto the wall. So there we are, do you like the wall? <laughs> Made it specially for this job. It's like being back in my old sort of set building days when I was a photographer. Um, so with these hanging plates, you want the screw head to stick out just enough to catch the plate, but not so far that the camera isn't fitting snug to the wall. And there's nothing for it, but a little bit of trial and error really. You just have to offer it up, adjust it, and offer it up again until it fits. There you go. And of course, if you really want to drive yourself crazy and make life difficult for yourselves, then you can use multiple plates on each edge. So what about fitting a back? A cabinet back is good for all kinds of things. They can add strength or help maintain squareness. They cover up the wall behind, which is often a good thing. Uh, and they hide the bulk of the fixings that you're using. You can either fit a thin back or a thick back. Let's start with the thin backs first. And at the risk of stating the obvious, if your cabinets are going into an alcove where the edges won't be seen, or perhaps they're sitting on top of a wardrobe or lardy in it, then just planting a thin back on and stapling it in place does the job just fine. And you can use these little low angle brackets like these to fix to the wall where they won't be seen. Let's make life a little more interesting and start by rebating the back in place. I want a rebate that's slightly deeper than the thickness of the back and wide enough to take our fixings. More on that in a minute. The top and base can be rebated straight through, but if you do that with the sides you'll end up with a bit of a gap that really ought to be filled. One way around that is to stop the rebate before the end of the pass and then square up the corner with a chisel. With the carcass put together, the back can then be fitted. I like staples as they're less likely to pull through, but feel free to use nails or screws, whichever works for you. When it comes to fixings, I really like these simple corner plates. They screw into the corner of the carcass against the rebate, so they're well supported. And you can drill a small hole through the back to mark the position. A scrap of offcut held up against the inside of the back helps to drill against and to keep things tidy, which in turn makes fitting them really easy.
You will get a visible screw head with these, but that's easily hidden, either filled and painted over, or with plastic cover caps, or these little self-adhesive covers that can also be overpainted. Now the other way to fit a thin back is to fit it into a groove that runs all the way around the carcass. I'll use a grooving bit for this, sometimes called a slot cutter bit, and I'm setting the router up so the groove is inside the back edge of the carcass to give a little bit of extra room for our fixing. As with a rebate, the top and base can be grooved straight through, but the sides will show a little notch at the join. Again, you can either fill this, stop the groove short, or just let the edge banding cover it up, if that's what you're using. So just a word of caution, if you are relying on edge banding or paintable tape to cover up that little notch, then you need to cut the grooves, edge band, and trim before you do your machining for whatever fixings you're going to use to join the sides to the top and base, because the tape increases the height of the sides by a millimeter or just over. Uh, so I'm gonna use a cleat to hang this cabinet on, sometimes called a French cleat. I'm using a simple strip of MDF that's ripped in half at an angle and one half fixed onto the cabinet, and the other onto the wall. The cabinet half fits pretty snugly, but I've taken about 20 mil or so off the length of the wall section, just to give us a little bit of lateral adjustment. And what about solid backs? Well, I prefer thin backs, to be honest, mostly because of the weight, but a solid back has the advantage that you can fix directly through it with, for example, pocket hole screws where they'll never be seen. And you can fix directly onto it using, say, these offset brackets, actually part of an adjustable cabinet bracket, but when they pair these up, they act like a sort of commercial metal cleat, which gives you a little bit of adjustment laterally on there as well. So I'll leave it there, I think, for this one. There are many, many ways to make cabinets and many different options, and I couldn't hope to cover them all in this series, but I think I've managed to do what I set out to do, which was to answer the most common questions that I've had into a single set of videos that can act as a reference, as a resource that's freely available to everyone and that covers the basics. Today we've had four ways to hang a cabinet on a wall and three different ways to fit the backs. We've made eight cabinets overall in the series using fixings that cost fractions of a penny to ones that cost a couple of pounds each. And I've used the cheapest jig I own and my most expensive handheld power tool. And honestly, I can't put my hand on my heart and say that any of these cabinets is better than any of the others. Faster to make, of course, more appropriate to a production environment, naturally, more convenient to flat pack, transport and install, certainly. But unless I start testing them to destruction using methods that they were never meant to cope with, I'll stand by every single one of these cabinets that I've made in this series. In fact, that's exactly what I'll be doing because I'll be using these cabinets right here in the workshop. But that's for a future project, so be sure to join me in that one by subscribing to the channel. If you enjoyed the video of the series, give it a thumbs up or two and leave me a comment down below. And as always, thanks so much to my Patreon pals and my YouTube members for their amazing support. I really appreciate the comments and the feedback, the conversations that we have that help form the ideas behind the videos that appear on the channel. This video series in particular has been a long time coming and has been the subject of many conversations. So if you'd like to be part of that conversation, part of that community. Come and join us as a Patreon supporter or YouTube member. We'd love to have you along and taking part. That really is it for this week though, and that's it for this series. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time here on the 10 Minute Workshop. Everybody hope you're well. Uh, Wednesday at 11.30. I'm just interrupting my, what am I doing, part four of the Caminetry video. Just had a rep come to give me some hinge samples I want to do some stuff with. And uh, I've just, this second notice that I've just hit 
100,000 subscribers. So it's kind of, I'm just sort of doing this to mark the event. <laughs> so that I'm really bright, I'm really too bright. Too bright, the other way. It's better. Um, so yeah, anyway, 100,000 subscribers. We did it, we did it, we did it. Uh, who knows <laughs> if it'll go up or down or whatever else, but uh, we finally got to 100,000. Um, I'll talk more about this in the main video, I'm sure. But yeah, it's quite a, it's, it's a, it's a strange feeling. Because it's happened so fast, uh, 14,000 I think in the last 28 days, 10,000 in the last 12 days I think, um, it feels a little bit like it's unearned, which is wrong I know because I have absolutely earned <laughs> every one of those subscribers, but you know there's that thing where you toil and toil and toil over something and, and you get there eventually like climbing a mountain this scaling this particular peak seems to have happened very quickly and it has obviously but uh, anyway I'm, I'm really really thrilled really stoked about it happening we made it couldn't have done it without you guys and uh, yeah we'll talk more about this uh, at the weekend but for now I need to crack on and get the rest of these little cabinets done see you later